the Houthis started a joint operation with Iraqi militias against Israel. The Houthi group's military spokesman in Yemen, Yahya Sari, announced that their forces, along with Iraqi Islamic resistance, carried out two military operations targeting Israeli targets in two cities in the country. According to Sari, this was the first coordinated operation between the Houthis and Iraqi militias. During it, important targets were hit in Ashdod, south of Tel Aviv, and Haifa, north of it. In addition, they carried out a third operation targeting the Tutor ship in the Red Sea because the company that owns it violated the decision to ban entry into the ports of occupied Palestine, the Houthi spokesperson noted. The Houthis say the ship was seriously damaged by an attack by an unmanned boat and aerial drones. Sari once again warned all companies about the consequences of interaction with Israel. If the warnings are not taken seriously, company ships will be attacked in our area of operation, said Sari. The Houthis said the Tutor coal carrier was seriously damaged and vulnerable to sinking after they targeted the vessel with an unmanned surface boat, drones and ballistic missiles. The ship was hit by about 126 kilometers southeast of Hodaida. Maritime security firm Ambri said the impact of the unmanned surface vessel caused severe flooding and damage to the engine room, the U.S. Central Command said in a statement on the attack, which was the Houthis' first using a boat as a weapon. It has been launching scores of drone and missile attacks on shipping in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden since November in support of the Palestinians under Israeli attack in Gaza. They have sunk one ship seized another vessel and killed three seafarers in several attacks. Recently, Yemen's Houthi rebels have claimed responsibility for a small watercraft and missile attack that left a Greek-owned cargo ship taking water and in need of rescue near the Red Sea port of Hodaida. A major underwater fault line stretching along the U.S. west coast has the potential to cause over a 9-degree earthquake as well as tsunami, a new geological study has revealed. The fault is capable of generating one of the worst earthquakes the world has seen, according to a study published in the journal Science Advances. Scientists have mapped Cascadia subduction zone fault line using underwater mapping technique. If erupted, the 600-mile fault line stretching from southern Canada to northern California could generate tsunamis reaching 100 feet tall, damage more than half a million buildings and kill countless people in its wake. The tsunami is likely cause $80 billion in damages and leave 10,000 dead also in just Oregon and Washington alone, according to estimates. Emergency plans are in place for Oregon and Washington in the aftermath of a quake. The earthquake will also cause deaths and diseases due to contaminated waters and exposure to mass dead bodies. Co-author Professor Harold Tobin said, We have the potential for earthquakes and tsunamis as large as the biggest ones we've experienced on the planet. Cascadia seems capable of generating a magnitude 9 or a little smaller or a little bigger, he added. The researchers believe that Vancouver, Seattle and San Francisco cities fall into a violent zone which would see the worst devastation as the fault line is quite smooth. For decades, scientists have warned about the potential of the Cascadia subduction zone, a mega-thrust fault that runs offshore along the coast from northern Vancouver Island to Cape Mendocino, California. The fault is split into four segments, meaning the faults could rupture independently of one another, or all together at once, and due to differences in types of rocks and other seismic characteristics, some lines could be more dangerous than others. While the study cannot predict when Cascadia will unleash a quake, the authors note it is believed to give way to big quakes roughly every 500 years. The last one occurred in 1700, and caused a tsunami, which struck the west coast of North America and the coast of Japan. Thank you.
по завершению возвращался в место дислокации, меня ударил ПВ дрон Камикадзе. Машина загорелась, и я принял решение на скорость идти в безопасное место, чтобы спасти веренную мне боевую машину. Тем самым не допустил уничтожения боевой техники. Продолжение